back to my channel. My name is Jenny from Sincerely Jen Patterns and today we're making the small size apothecary tote. Um, this one I'm going to make completely out of quilting cotton. Um, I made the large size and that for the exterior contrast pieces I used vinyl so I wanted to make one that was um, made completely how the pattern is written. So we're going to start off by taking the exterior back out. Oh, let me follow this or preface this with saying that I already interfaced all of my pieces with woven interfacing. Um, I get my woven, woven interfacing from Royal Pixie Fabrics. It's called Pixie Fuse Light. Um, this fabric is from somewhere. This fabric is from Rocker by D Stash, and this fabric is from Royal Pixie Fabrics. Um, both were custom, so I don't know if this one is available anymore, but this one is um, a perpetual pre-order kind of deal with Royal Pixie. So if you want some of that, you could always get some. Um, so the first step, we're going to place the exterior back pocket panel right sides together with one of the lining back pocket panels. And we're going to Clip these together along the top edge only. Um, seam allowances change frequently throughout this pattern, so make sure to watch the seam allowance. Um, I've got it bold and underlined in each step to help you follow it easier. So this first step, we're going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, for the sewing portions, I typically use a three and a half or four millimeter stitch length, and then for top stitching, I use a longer stitch length of four and a half or five. Um, that's as long as my machine goes is five. And my thread is Tech 70 um, from Saya Swag Bags. And my sewing machine is a Juki 8700. So I just sewed those together right along the top seam only. I'm going to flip these now so that they're wrong sides together and I'm going to press that seam well. Okay, now we're going to top stitch along that seam using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to increase my stitch length to five. Now we want to take our other lining back pocket panel and um, one of the exterior pocket panel C pieces. We're going to place those right sides together matching the top side of the exterior back pocket to the bottom edge of pocket panel C. I'm going to finger press just to find the center of these just to make sure that that's centered. They should match up right at the seam line um, which makes them a little bit wider at the two matched edges. So I'm going to clip that together. And we're going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. to press the top panel C or pocket panel C up and away from um, the lining back pocket panel and the seam allowance will be facing up toward um, pocket panel C. 
Okay, now we're going to top stitch along that seam on pocket panel C and through the seam allowance. Again, using a 1 8, 1 8 inch seam allowance. the assembled pocket pieces right on top like this and we're going to fold the exterior um, panel away and line up just the two lining panels along the bottom Right, and here we're going to use a three-quarter inch seam allowance. going to trim that seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. And then we're going to fold the exterior back down in place. Make sure that the seam here at the top is lined up nicely. And then we're going to clip these panels together all the way down the sides. All right, now we want to base the sides in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And since these are basting stitches, your longest stitch length is fine. Now we'll take two of the um, side panels. We want two opposite ones. So they'll be like this. You can go ahead and match the angled edge up with the angled edge of the pocket panels. side panel. Alright, then we want to sew these in place 
using a one half inch seam allowance. And I do have to apologize for the sound of my air conditioner in the background, but I did get it put in. I don't, if you've watched the large size of this bag, um, I was complaining towards the end that it was really hot in here. So, um, my sewing room does not have the central air that the rest of the house has. So, I have like a window unit air conditioner that I needed my husband to put in for me because it was down in the basement and I could not carry it out. So he did that today. And it's finally not a million degrees in here. So we're going to press those side panels away from the pocket panels like this. All right, once you have the pocket panels or the side panels pressed to the side, um, I do wanna note that the seam allowance is pressed toward the back of those side panels. So we're going to top stitch now um, along these seams through the side panel and the seam allowance using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. back panel completed. So we're going to start with the front pockets. So we want to take the exterior pocket panel A and then we want let's see, the eight and a half inch length of zipper. So you want to make sure that your zipper is um, closing toward the left and you're going to place it right side down on top of the ex exterior pocket panel A. And then we want to go ahead and base that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And now we're going to take a lining pocket panel A and place that right sides together with exterior pocket panel A with the zipper sandwiched in between. And we're going to clip along that top edge again. And 
and then we're going to sew that together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. zipper pull out of the way as you sew past it if you need to. Alright, and now I'm going to press these two panels so that they're wrong sides together and both are away from the zipper. Now I've pressed these both wrong sides together and we're going to top stitch beneath the zipper using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. pocket panel B and I'm just going to find the center real quick and we want to place that right side down on top of the zipper let me find the center of the zipper also and you don't want to clip into your zipper tape to mark the center um, because that can weaken the tape and cause it to fray so I never recommend that you do that like I'll oftentimes clip into the seam allowance of my fabric to mark centers and that's fine but not on zippers. Alright so I'm just pinning um, or clipping the long side of pocket panel B to the top side of the zipper. And then I'm just going to sew that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. When I move my zipper pull out of the way, or anytime I stop and lift up my presser foot, um, I try to stop with the needle in the down position so that the uh, fabric and materials underneath the zipper foot don't slide around um, when you have the zipper, po zipper foot raised. Alright, now we're going to take the other pocket panel A. and I'm going to place it right sides together with the other lining pocket panel A that's already attached. Um, I just want to make sure that it's centered. The, side, the sides at this point are not going to line up and that's okay. That's how it should be. And then we're going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
Now we're going to leave um, that lining panel down, but I'm going to press pocket panel B up away from the zipper. All right, and now I'm going to top stitch above the zipper using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And really don't worry at all about these sides not matching up right now. Okay, so now we want to take our seven and three quarter inch length of zipper tape and place it with the zipper pull closing toward the left again. Place it right side down along the top of pocket panel B. I'm going to put that in place. I thought the, the pop of the purple zippers would look nice um, with all of the black and white of the exterior and then with the lining being so colorful that it kind of brings a little bit of that to the outside. Okay, so we're just going to sew the zipper on right now using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to take one pocket panel lining B. Um, so this, I didn't have enough of my lining fabric to cut all of the lining pieces. Um, so this one piece I cut from a waterproof canvas that I used earlier, so I did not interface this. Um, and it's kind of going to be like the side of the pocket where you won't really see it, that it doesn't match the rest of them. And then my interior zipper pocket actually is also cut from the same um, waterproof canvas fabric. All right, so now we're just going to sew that in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so now I'm going to press this lining panel away from the zipper and toward the back, just like that. All right, so here's what we have now. And I'm going to top stitch beneath the zipper using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Going to take pocket panel C and place it right side down on top of this zipper. Now 
we're going to sew that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. All of these parts could be done, like I like to baste the first piece to the zipper and then um, like sew the actual 3 8 inch seam allowance with the second piece that's being attached to the zipper. But you could do both in one step and just use a 3 8 inch, inch seam allowance. Um, I just like to make sure that my pieces aren't going to move and I feel a little better about that when I baste one using a quarter inch and then sew the other one. Um, using the actual seam allowance. Okay, so then finally we're going to take this piece and place it right side up on the table and then place the assembled part so far down on top and we're just kind of going to center that along the top raw edge. Secure that in place with my clips. And then I'm going to sew that together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to press lining panel C, or I'm sorry, pocket panel C, up away from the zipper and leave the lining panel down how it is. All right, and then I'm going to top stitch along that seam above the zipper using an eighth inch seam allowance. to fold the exterior pocket panel up and out of the way. We're going to take the two lining pocket panel A pieces and hold them together. I'm actually going to stick a couple clips on the side to keep just those two pieces lined up. I'm going to move the other lining panels out of the way. And now I'm just going to trim do it this way. I'm going to trim the bottom of the longer panel to be even with the bottom of the shorter panel. We're going to clip those together. I'm going to sew that together using a half inch seam allowance. Trim that seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. And by doing this, you're making sure that all of these extra pocket panels will not be in the bottom seam where you attach the bottom panel to make that seam even thicker than it needs to be. All right, now we'll fold the exterior and pocket panel A lining pieces out of the way. And we'll do the same process 
with pocket panel B lining pieces. to sew that together using a half inch seam allowance. Probably should have pinned that or clipped it. Seems okay. Trim that seam allowance down. All right, so now the two pocket panels should be the pocket panel B panel should be just slightly shorter than the two pocket pa panel A panels, um, but just as long as both of them are far enough away from the bottom that they won't be caught in the seam allowance. So now we're going to trim the sides to be even. I want to make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Ideally I would take this to my cutting mat and line up a ruler and just cut that with my... I'm actually going to do that so I'll be right back. I'm just going to line up my ruler with the exterior panels and cut that straight across. All right, so I trimmed all of the lining panels to be even with the sides of the exterior panels. And now I'm just going to place a few clips down each side. going to base this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Flipping this over just to sew the same direction um, so that I'm not pulling the pockets like twisted or something in the front. we did with the back, we've got the two um, side panels. We'll place those right side down on top of, oh, I did want to point out first before we do that, um, sometimes if your seam allowance is off a little bit along the zippers, then your pocket panel pieces could end up being slightly taller than um, they should be. So be just little bit taller and I think mine actually is the large one I sewed perfectly okay so then just go ahead and trim from the bottom or top I don't think it really matters um, this is really like not even a whole quarter of an inch so I probably could have left it and it would come out fine but just trim it so that it's the same height as the back panel If it was um, more significant than that, if it was if it was off more than just like a quarter, less than a quarter of an inch, really, um, you may want to take a little bit from the top and the bottom just to keep it even. All right, so now I'm going to place my side panel right side down on top of the front pocket panels and. Clip that in place and then clip this side in place. There's 
just the same way. Alright, and then we're going to use a one half inch seam allowance. All right, now I'm going to go press these side panels away from the pocket panels. All right, and then we're going to top stitch along each of those seams using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And the seam allowances from the pocket panels are pressed toward the back of the side panel. Alright, so to make the handle connector, you have four pieces that are cut two inch wide by two inches long. Um, so go ahead and press two of the two inch long sides into the center and press it nice and flat. And now we have a one inch wide by two inch long piece. So we're going to top stitch along each of the folded sides. And since you're doing four of these, you could cut a strip um, that is just eight inches long by two inches wide and fold the two eight inch long sections into the center um, and then top stitch down the sides of all of the connectors at once and then cut them at that point. So after you top stitch down both sides, then you'll fold that in half slide a rectangle ring into the fold and then we're just going to base the ends closed using a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, so I'm just going to repeat that process with the other three connectors. And you can also, if you cut them two by two, you can sew kind of chain sew them and then just cut them apart.
and then we'll just fold each of them in half and slide a connector on and baste the ends together. Now each of those connectors will be basted to the exterior um, right where the side panel meets the pocket panels at the top. You'll just line the top corner up right inside of that um, over top of the exterior pocket panel C and we're just going to base that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat that on the back panel. going to take um, one of the top panels that has the Decoville light attached. We're going to go ahead and place that right side down on top of the, both the back and the front. Um, yep, right side down. So the bottom edge of the top panel is slightly longer than the top edge so just make sure that you have the right um, part the right edge of the top panel all right and then we're going to sew that in place using a one half inch seam allowance in mind when you sew over the connectors that it can be a little bit thick and make sure that your rectangle rings are pulled all the way down so that you're not somehow sewing over those. That will definitely break a needle. And then you can backstitch across those connectors also for um, added strength. So 
So I think sewing this bag in all fabric should be domestic friendly. Um, some of the front pockets get a little bit thick, but I think it definitely should be okay as long as you're using all fabric. Um, if you were using vinyl, it gets a little bit too thick, I think, for a domestic. Um, so we're going to now press the seam allowance. We'll go down and we're going to iron that the um, connectors then should poke up. So you should have this. And we're going to press all of this down away from that top panel. So you should have this. And now we're going to top stitch directly beneath that top panel. Using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I think I might want to sew one of these that's um, full vinyl exterior with uh, waterproof canvas lining and I think I would use no interfacing on that. Hmm. I definitely want to try that. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat the same process with the front panel. I have so many new vinyls that I want to sew. Um, so I don't know what I would, I kind of want to make this out of solid. So I don't know if you saw in my Facebook group, my first like prototype of this. I don't know. I don't know. Usually I make like a prototype when I have a new bag pattern idea. I kind of um, go straight in and draft the pieces up in Illustrator. Once I have my pieces ready, um, then I usually will cut it out of like a vinyl that I don't like, just something that I don't have to interface so that I'm not putting a lot of time in it, just to make sure that my pieces fit together um, and that it looks how I want it to look. So this time though, I went in with like a brand new vinyl that I just gotten from Warmino and uh, it's not bad. I think the bag is probably functional, but it just doesn't look great. And I'm so mad that I like use this super cool vinyl that I really, really like on um, not a perfect bag. So I need to try another one. And maybe I'll actually order more. It's her, I think it's camel colored vinyl. And it was just released in, I think, the June 1st, 2022 restock. Um, so I might order more of that and do a, a redo of that bag. Um, plus, I want to make it in the small size because the large is... What happened was, I guess, when I made the bag, I made the large size initially and I finished it and I was like oh this is a little bit bigger than I like I really would like it smaller but I know some people like big bags so that's when I decided that it was going to have two sizes and that's when I went ahead and made the smaller size so now you get both and I think that happens with my patterns a lot I like smaller bags and I know everybody else doesn't. So, all right, we're going to press that top panel up away from the exterior. All right, now we're going to top stitch beneath that seam using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
we're going to take both of these panels and place them right sides together. First, I'm going to line up the seam at the side where the top panel meets the side panels. And I'm going to clip that in place. And then I'll clip from top to bottom. I just like to make sure that that seam lines up because that's one of the obvious things that will show if it doesn't line up, you're going to see it. Now we're going to sew the sides together using a one half inch seam allowance. Now we're going to go ahead and trim these seam allowances down to about an eighth of an inch. I think when I say an eighth of an inch, I usually go a little bit bigger than that, so somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. Which I think would be three sixteenths, but it's a little bit specific eyeball it. All right, now we need to attach our crossbody connectors. So I already went ahead and pressed these. Um, what you're going to do is press the two three inch long raw edges into the center um, and then fold one the top edge down by one inch and the bottom edge up by half inch. We're going to slide our D-ring into the one inch fold. So now you have this. So now you could pin this on your bag. I'm going to use some um, double-sided tape, which I don't normally use with fabric, but it's honestly easier than pinning. So I'm going to stick a couple tiny pieces down here just to keep the folds down. And then I'll use some to hold it on to the exterior as well. We'll go 
go ahead and do the other one too right now. Some more pieces. All right, so now we're going to open up the bag exterior and let me place this and then I'll show you where I'm placing it. All right, so that connector is directly beneath the side seam or beneath the seam of the top panel and um, centered along the side seam. So I'm just going to top stitch first directly beneath the hardware as close as I can get to that D-ring. We'll just go ahead and repeat that with the other connector on the other side. Oh, which I just have to say that my stripes lined up nicely over there, even though they didn't on the other side. I forgot that that was something I wanted to make sure lined up. Oh well. So just make sure that this one is placed to be even with the other connector.
we're going to sew the bottom panel on. Alright, so here's our exterior bottom panel, which has the Decoville Heavy attached to it. I'm just going to find my centers. along both of the long sides and then also along the short side short sides I should say all right and then we already have the centers marked on the sides we just need to mark the centers on the front and back so I'm just matching up the seams where the side panels are attached and then folding that to mark the center. I'll do the same on the back. So when you do that just make sure that you don't snip in further than your seam allowance. So then I want to place the bottom panel right sides together with one of the exterior panels and I'm going to clip in the center first and then a few times on either side of the center or a couple times. And repeat that on the other side. I was really hoping I can finish this bag tonight, but it's already almost 11.30. I'm getting tired. So I leave in the morning. Or no, tomorrow we're going on vacation. We're not leaving home um, until about noon. So I can stay up late and that's fine, but... No good comes from me sewing after I'm too tired to be sewing. So we'll see. I just really wanted to finish this before we leave. And that way I can get the pictures in the morning. I'm taking my laptop with me. We're going to Hocking Hills, so it's not like a... Um, I don't know, like a, a vacation with an itiner itinerary. I can't even say that word. There's no plans, um, and plus it's going to be like 100 degrees out. Like I think I saw on the news that it was like record temperatures for this week. Um, so usually we go hiking. I don't think we're going to be doing a lot of hiking. And we did get a cabin that has a pool, so I'm sure we'll do plenty of swimming, but I also am sure we'll have plenty of downtime inside the cabin in the air conditioning. Um, so if I'm just sitting around and we're not doing anything, no reason why I can't be editing videos and finalizing the pattern. So I'm hoping that I get it done this week. We will see. If I don't, I'll finish it up next weekend. Alright, once the entire bottom panel is clipped in place all the way around, I do want to point out, you'll notice in the corners, like it looks like I have little wrinkles. The part that matches up with the exterior is at the seam line. So directly around that Decoville Heavy, that is what matches up. So you might have wrinkles along the edges because the edges are not going to match. But at the seam line, it matches up nicely. You don't have wrinkles there. Um, I like to sew my bottom panels in place with my zipper foot because it gets right up alongside um, whatever I'm sewing. So I'm just going to switch out my foot really quick. Okay, 
and I'm just going to start on one of the longer straight sides and we're going to sew the bottom panel in place using a one half inch seam allowance. I actually have a stiletto and here I am using my snips instead. Sometimes going around the curves it's helpful to have something that's not my finger um, to get in there and hold things together while I sew. So I'm just kind of closing my snips and using them as a stiletto instead of reaching over there and grabbing my stiletto. I know a lot of people um, staple their bottom panels in, and this probably is a good one for you staplers. Um, and I did want to point out, and I didn't say anything, to make sure that you're not sewing through the pocket panels when you sew around the bottom. Um, you shouldn't be because they should be far enough away, but just something to keep in mind. So we're going to trim that seam allowance. Before I trim the seam allowance, I'm going to look inside and make sure that the bottom panel looks nice how it's sewed on. Make sure that you didn't get any folds sewn into the seam allowance. Once you're satisfied with that, then go ahead and trim it down to that magical between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. from through your stitches. All right, so now the exterior is complete. I'm going to set that aside. Now we're going to take one lining panel 
And this is the lining panel that has the cutout in the Decoville light. And we want to take one of our interior zipper pocket panels. And on the wrong side, so either side of this, of the interior zipper pocket panel, you want to draw one inch down from the top and one inch in from each side. You're going to draw a seven inch line. I have a zipper template from mormino.com um, and this takes the guessing or the measuring, I guess, the work out of making interior zipper pockets because I can just line it up with the top and trace around the box. So you'll draw one seven inch line one inch down from the top that stops one inch in from each side and then half inch below that you will mark another line that is also seven inches long and stops one inch from each end and then you'll draw a line to connect the two. Alright, so then we want to mark the center of our interior zipper pocket and mark the center of our lining panel. And then we want to place the pocket panel one inch down from the top and centered. Let me get my ruler. make sure that that is one inch down. That was a pretty good guess. All right, and then you can go ahead and pin this in place if you choose to. I'm just going to hope that it stays. Let me switch my foot back. Okay, and I'm just now, I'm sewing directly along the lines of the marked box. This must be what happens when I get tired. I, I'm sewing and I'm not even saying what I'm doing. So, although it is a little bit difficult, if you've never made a video of yourself sewing, it's hard to explain what you do every step of the way. And I'm talking to nobody but myself. So I'm just sewing all the way around that box. I backstitched a few stitches at the beginning, and then when I reach that same spot, I'll backstitch again a few stitches. And I use my shorter stitch length for this, so I'm at about three and a quarter right now, millimeters. just going to cut directly down the center of that marked box and when we get about half an inch away from the end we're going to cut from that center cut mark to each of the corners so kind of in a Y shape and then we'll turn it around and cut into the opposite corner
and just make sure that you don't cut your stitches but cut as close as you can to them. So now I'm going to go to my ironing board and press the um, interior zipper pocket panel to the wrong side of the lining main as such and I'll press it nice and flat so that you don't see any of that lining pocket. Alright, so the pocket is pressed to the wrong side, nice and flat. Um, we've got our zipper, which is 9 inches long. And I'm going to just take um, some of my quarter inch double sided tape and run it directly along the edge of the zipper. Let's see, I don't want to actually pull any of my tape off just yet. Um, make sure that your zipper pull is closing to the side that you prefer. So I just always keep all of my zippers closing to the left. And that's just the way I like it. I think it really is personal preference. I know I see people saying, oh no, I put my zipper on backwards. Um, and like, I don't really think that's a big deal. If I put my zippers on the other way, I just would never even say anything because I think it's totally personal preference. I think it's more important maybe to make sure they're all going in the same direction. But, all right, so I stuck the top down. Now I'll just go ahead and peel off the paper on the bottom section. Alright, now we're going to top stitch all the way around this box using a quarter inch, no, an eighth, of, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now we have this. So now we're going to take our other interior zipper pocket panel and place it right sides together with the one that's attached. And we're just going to clip together all the way around. Leaving the bottom edge unclipped. Now we're going to fold the 
lining mane out of the way and we're going to sew the two zipper pocket panels together using a one half inch seam allowance around or up one side around the top edge and then down the other side leaving the bottom edge unsewn. Now we're going to trim the seam allowance on the pocket panel, at least on the sides, um, and that makes it easier at the end when you um, fold the bottom edge in by half an inch or quarter inch or whatever to edge stitch the opening of the pocket close. It's a lot easier to do if these seam allowances are trimmed down. So the top, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now we need to make the zipper panels. Here I have my four zipper panels, two of which are interfaced and two of them are not. So the two that are interfaced will be the top edges um, that show on the exterior and then the two that are not will show on the lining. You can inter interface all of them if you choose to. Um, I like to just cut down on bulk where I can and this is one spot where I feel like I can. So I'm going to take my pen and a ruler. Where's my ruler? All right, so just take your ruler and measure one inch in from the short edge on each panel and we're going to do this on each side so each of the short edges and this is because we want to fold each of the short ends toward the back by half an inch so if I mark one inch and then I fold the raw edge to that line that will be folding it toward the back by half an inch So I'm going to go press these. Okay, so we have each of the short ends pressed to the wrong side by one half inch. And all right, so we're just going to go ahead and get this finished. Clearly I took a longer break than just a minute because it's now daylight. Um, all right, so right now what I'm doing, this is the top zipper and I'm just folding the zipper back on itself and I got this tip from somebody in one of the sewing groups. When you fold your zipper like this, if you use a lighter to kind of melt the edge and then you can just kind of stick it together. And that works better than um, basting it, I think. So be careful, don't burn yourself. If you do, I'm not responsible.
All right, so that's what the back of the zipper looks like and the front. All right, so we're going to take our prepared zipper panels and with one of the zipper panels that is interfaced, I'm going to place my zipper right side down. I wanna place the end of the zipper where it's folded back um, about half an inch in from the edge or I usually line it up with where the top raw edge is folded to the back. All right, and then we're going to sew that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is another one of those situations um, where you could put both panels down immediately and just sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance right off the bat. But I just find that things shift less if I base the zipper to one panel first. So I mean, when I'm in a hurry though, I definitely do it all at one time. And just don't sew past the end of your zipper panel here um, because those stitches will be visible on your zipper. Alright, now we'll take one of the uninterfaced zipper panels and place that right sides together with the one that's attached to the zipper. And we're just going to clip that in place. And I find it easier to do this with my zipper unzipped. Um, that way you don't have to worry about the zipper pull being in the way. All right, and now we're going to sew this down using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, and now I like to zip my zipper, and then we're going to press both of these panels wrong sides together and away from the zipper. So I will press them away like this. Okay, so I pressed both panels wrong sides together and away from the zipper. Now I'm just going to go ahead and clip the raw edges together.
and then we're going to sew all the way around the zipper panels. So we're going to, in addition to top stitching, we're going to sew the open side closed. Or well, it's more of a basting. So I'm just putting this on my longest stitch line. And I'm using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And then you can use an eighth or a quarter inch seam allowance to base the open and the open side closed um, because we will use a, a one half inch seam allowance when we sew that to the bag lining. Okay, so we've got one on. Let's go ahead and attach the other in the same way. <coughs> Which might be easier if I actually did it the same way. All right, so I'm going to place my zipper right sides right side down on top of the zipper panel and I want to make sure that it's even this might be easier with the zipper though. I want to make sure that it's even with the zipper panel that's attached to the zipper already so pay attention to that And then once you get it kind of clipped in place, you can go ahead and unzip the zipper again for sewing. Make sure that your um, folded edges stay folded. All right, and then I'm just going to sew this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and it's okay if you're using your longest stitch length since this is basting stitches. And I'll place the other zipper panel without interfacing on top and go ahead and clip this together. And you want to make sure that both of the zipper panels are even. Sometimes I find the one that's not interfaced can seem to stretch a little bit. Um, so if you need to refold the end or anything, you can go ahead and do that just to make sure they stay even. And then we're going to sew this on using a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
All right, and then again, we're going to go ahead and press these two zipper panels wrong sides together and away from the zipper. I'll go ahead and um, clip together the two zipper panels all the way down the open edge. And then we're going to top stitch all the way around this zipper panel, again using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. If anybody is watching that has a recommendation for a microphone that I can use that will cut out the background noise, I'm very interested in that. Um, I purchased one and it, it does not block anything out, so I haven't even I haven't been using it. Um, so I really need something that blocks out the background noise because I hate that you can hear the trains going by and my air conditioner running and my fan running and every little sound. So if I could do something to block that out, I would really appreciate that. So we have our zipper panel assembled. All right, so I already went ahead and pressed this, um, but what you do is take your zipper tab and fold both of the long raw edges into the center and press well. And then you're going to fold each of the short raw edges under by half inch and then fold the whole tab in half. So this is what you get. And then you just go ahead and slide that zipper part way into the tab. You can put it all the way in. Um, I usually just put it about halfway in. But I guess depending on how long you would like your tail to be on the zipper. All right, and then we're just going to top stitch all the way around this tab. So I like to start on the side closest to the zipper. And you do want to make sure that you back stitch at the start and stop. line the zipper panel up with the top of the lining main and match the centers and then clip that in place and we're going to base this on using a quarter inch seam allowance
pick. One of our lining top panels, or I'm sorry, just a top panel. They're both cut from exterior contrast. We're going to place that right sides down along the top of the lining main, making sure you're lining up the longer side of the top panel. All right, and then we're going to sew that down using a half inch seam allowance. Alright, now I'm going to press this top panel up and away from the lining main. And now we're going to top stitch through the top panel and through the seam allowance that is pressed up toward the back of the top panel. All right, now we're going to repeat this with the other lining main and the other top panel. So find the center along the top and bottom of this lining main. And then we're going to match the center of the zipper panel to that center mark on the main and then clip it in place. Alright, I'm going to base this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, and now we're going to place the other, and you can unzip your zipper here if that helps you 
to have more room, which I think I might do that. Because then you can just hold this other lining panel back out of the way. Just make sure you don't sew through your zipper tab here. Place the longer edge of the other top panel right sides down along the top of the lining main with the zipper panel sandwiched in between. I'm going to clip that in place. And then I'm going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. Now, same process, we're going to go press this zipper or this top panel up away from the lining main. Alright, so I pressed this top panel. I pressed this top panel up away from the lining main, and we're just going to top stitch through that. I'm actually going to re zip this just because it's getting confusing. Um, I'm going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're going to tuck that zipper tail down inside. I'm going to match up the two lining mains along the sides, first matching the seam where the top panel is attached to the lining main, and then I'll clip together all the way down the sides. And this is the same process that we use to um, attach the side panel, like for the exterior, this is the same process. So we're just repeating those same steps. Now we're going to sew this together. Starting at the top, we'll be using a half inch seam allowance, and then we will increase our seam allowance to five eighths of an inch once we get away from the top a little bit. So you just kind of slowly 
grayed out to five eighths. And this will just help the lining to fit nicer inside of the exterior. And I think that's a pretty standard thing with most patterns. And here, since we're starting at the bottom, I'm just going to start at 5 eighths. And then I'll decrease my stitch or my seam allowance to one half when I get near the top. going to trim the seam allowance down. Now we're going to um, insert the bottom panel. You can unzip your top zipper panels if you choose. All right, so here's our bottom panel. So first I'm going to mark the centers along the long edges. And you can also use the pattern piece to do this if you don't want to fold it. And then I'm going to mark the centers along the short sides. And if you don't want to clip into it at all, you can use um, just a pen or a chalk pencil. All right, so I'm placing the bottom panel right sides together with one lining main, matching up the centers. First, I'm going to pin right or clip together right at the center. And then a couple of clips on either side of the center clip clip. And then I'll do the same on the other side. And then we'll match the side seam up with the center clip on the short side of the bottom panel. And again, we're lining this up at the seam line, which is now 5 eighths of an inch for the lining. So you will have little um, lumps and bumps, I guess, in the corners where you kind of ease those corners down into place, just as long as you aren't sewing over any of them at the seam line. That is fine. That's how it should be. And again, once you're once you have a few bags under your belt with uh, rounded curves like this, you don't even think about it, you just do it.
And for you staplers, this is a good bottom for stapling. All right, so here's what we have. So then I'm just going to switch over to my zipper foot again. Alright, so now I'm just going to sew this together using a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I like to start somewhere along like the straight edge of the bottom. It's much easier to start there than in a curve. And I'm just sewing right along and removing the clips as I go. Um, when I get to the curves, I have, we'll actually use it this time, I have my stiletto tool that I got from Mary Beth Made It, um, which actually she put my logo on, so you can get a custom stiletto like this. I'll uh, link her website down in the comments. So, um, it helps to hold, hold the two pieces together in the curves where you can't have the clips on it anymore with something that's a little smaller than your fingers and a little less dangerous than sewing tight curves with your finger in there. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing. Um, but you can see that how I like to sew around the curves, I kind of just move the bag up so that I go all the way around that shape. And I find that to be the easiest way to sew um, oval bottoms or any curves that I'm sewing. I guess I always just kind of lift the bag up to sew around areas.
All right, go ahead and take a look inside your lining. Make sure that that seam looks nice from inside. Um, I might have a little pucker right there, but I don't think it's that bad. And it's inside, so we're just gonna roll with that. It happens. So we're going to trim this seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch or whatever that magical size is that I've been trimming them to that's really probably more than an eighth of an inch. unzip the interior zipper pocket and then I'm going to turn the lining inside out. Once that's all the way turned inside out, I'm going to take my lining or my exterior, which is inside out, place the side of the lining with the zipper pocket along the side of the bag that has the slip pocket. So the backs are together. And we're just going to shove this inside. And I know some people like to put the exterior inside of the lining to do this, but I just find that it fits better to put the lining down inside of the exterior. So that's just my preference, um, but you can do either way you like. So I'm just matching up the side seams and nesting them together by folding one that way and the other one this way. So that way they should line up nicely. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm just going to throw all of my clips on the floor. We're just going to now flip all the way around. Make sure that your um, zipper panel and your rectangle rings are pointing downward so they don't get in the way. to sew that together using a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to switch back out to my regular foot that I like to use. Alright, 
second. We're going to sew all the way around this using a half inch seam allowance. So when you're sewing your bag together, don't be afraid to like squish it up and get it out of your way or whatever you need to do. All right, so now I'm going to trim this seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch. And the reason for that is because if I don't, when I turn it right side out, this seam allowance and this seam allowance kind of interfere with each other. And there are no like um, zipper or strap connectors or anything in that seam allowance, so it's not like you have to worry about any of that. Alright, so now we're just going to turn everything right side out through the interior zipper pocket. Um, one of my testers, Alex, used um, Decoville Light on the lining with a uh, waterproof canvas and they had a difficult time turning the bag right side out. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't know, I don't know. You might want to use a different method or just exclude the Decoville light on the lining if you're using a waterproof canvas um, because it, it did get too thick. But I do believe that they said that the 
structure was nice of the finished bag. So maybe make your interior zipper pocket a little bit bigger so that it's easier to turn out. This seems manageable with all cotton. So mostly, I mean, no less manageable than turning any other bag right side out. stripes matched up like very nicely. That's exciting. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to push my pocket down inside. I'm going to push my lining inside of the exterior now. Make sure you break a couple fingernails in the process. So then here, I just need to make sure that I'm going, I'm, I'll need to go iron this. Um, I'm just going to make sure I push that seam out really nicely and iron this all the way around that top seam. Just like that. So once I get that pressed well, then we'll come back and top stitch. So I turn the whole bag inside out to top stitch. If you have a <clears throat> swing arm machine or a cylinder arm machine, then you can leave your bag right side out to top stitch. Um, I find it a lot easier on my machine to have my bag inside out. So we're just going to use a 1 8 inch seam allowance and our stitch length of 5. I just take my time and make sure to keep this top stitch nice and even and make sure that that seam stays nice and um, like aligned to the top I guess. I hate when I sew like a, a bag that I'm really pleased with and then the very last step as I top stitch, I mess up. Um, and I do find, like on the bag that I used vinyl for, I found that it was easier to top stitch this last top stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance, so go ahead and do whatever you prefer. Once you finally top stitch that, you can turn your bag right side out. Alright, so I'm going to give the whole bag a press and 
um, I'm going to pull out my interior zipper pocket and fold the raw edge in by about quarter an in quarter a quarter inch. I'm going to fold that in by about quarter of an inch. That sounds so stupid. All right, so once I have that raw edge pressed to the inside of the zipper pocket, I'm going to place some clips here to hold it together. And then I'm just going to sew the bottom of this together using an eighth inch seam allowance. So I'm just pushing the pocket down inside. Now we need to make our straps. And this is turning out so cute. I think the small size is like my perfect bag size. So. I did already go ahead and press my handle, so I folded the handle in half, bringing the two long raw edges together, and then folded each of the long raw edges into that um, crease in the center, and then I refolded it along that center crease. Now we'll go ahead and top stitch down each long edge. using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and my long stitch length. Um, if I'm making handles out of leather or vinyl, I typically use um, double sided tape to hold them together since you can't press that.
Alright, now in the last video, I showed you how to attach, or in the video for the large size, I showed how to attach the handles using a, using rivets, um, because they were vinyl, but I'll go ahead and sew these ones on. I'm going to trim that extra interfacing from the end of this one. Alright, so what you want to do is go to your iron and press each end of each handle under by one half inch and then again by about one inch. So it, it will be like this and the raw edges will be enclosed inside. Alright, so current situation, we have both ends pressed under by half inch and then one inch on each of the handles. Go ahead and take your bag and you want to slide the rectangle ring into that second fold on each end of the handle. Make sure your handle is not twisted at all. Um, and this small size, I think could, you could probably also use um, three quarter inch handles and hardware and that would look okay as well. All right, so now we're going to, sorry, you won't be able to see this again. I'm just going to sew as close as I can to the hardware um, across the strap. And I'm going to like stitch across and then back stitch and then stitch across again. machine does not like back stitching on thick things. Alright, so let me show you what my when my sewing machine doesn't like to back stitch across something. Let me show you what I do. Because if you have that same issue, this could help you. Like I have no problem stitching forward over thick areas, but back stitching for some reason it does not enjoy. So I'm going to sew a second line of stitching across this closer to where that top fold is on the back. So just kind of eyeball where that fold is and then sew your second line of stitching. And since my sewing machine gets angry if I back stitch, what I do at this point is turn the whole thing around. So that way I'm sewing forward again across those same stitches. So it's a back stitch without back stitching. And then one more time. Does anybody else have um, the Juki 8700 that has that issue with back stitching on thick areas? I don't know if it's just my machine. Maybe it's my needle plate or something. But it will, my needle will go down in the hole by the feed dog instead of into the needle hole. So I'm just sewing again as close to the hardware as I can. I'm just going to use this same kind of turn the bag around method. And then one more time near the fold.
and I'm just trimming off threads here. All right, and then we'll repeat that same process to attach the other handle to the back. process. You could also sew like a box with an X if you wanted to, to hold your handles in place. Or again, you could put rivets in this too. Just because it's fabric doesn't mean that you cannot rivet it. Rivet it. Since it's just going to be repetitive, I'm not going to um, record the crossbody strap process. So if you need to see the video of the crossbody strap, then check out the video of the large size bag because it's exactly the same. Um, and you can see like how to thread it through the hardware and everything. So we're done. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, let me show the large and the small together.
So here's the large size and here's the small size. So it's not a huge difference, but it's a pretty considerable difference for handbag sizes. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you um, like the new apothecary tote and handbag. Um, I'm really pleased with how these came out and I definitely can't wait to make one in all vinyl. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. If you sew one of these bags, please post pictures of it in my Facebook group or tag me on Instagram. Um, I would love to see. Thanks for watching.